officially recording this voiceover in Toronto. It's been a few days since I've moved here and I'm finally feeling settled in and I cannot wait to catch you guys up because a lot has happened in the last month. Starting with getting another tattoo, I found this artist on Instagram and she's done these tiger flashes and I've been wanting a guardian tiger emerging from clouds for so long. It honestly was a little bit darker than I expected and that caused some anxiety through this month because the theme of this month was anxiety. That's one thing that happened and then I met up with Hannah for lots of coffee dates. It was a lot of just friendships and leaning on friends through all of the mishaps of Montreal flopping. Montreal flopped and that's why I'm in downtown but let's bring it back to when I was packing for Toronto. It's our last morning here for a while bugs. Yeah, it's our last morning here for a while. Thank you cutie bye. I couldn't sleep till like 5 a.m. I slept for three hours. <laughs> I love my morning cuddles. It's moving day. Oh my god, my little pimple here. <laughs> How beautiful this place is. I love it so much. I'm feeling so grateful. Well, if you here with me, I have a little celebratory glass of wine. I wanted to document this is my first night in Toronto. This energy, I don't even know where it's coming from. Welcome to my new office for the next few weeks. This month has been a glow up. It has been a journey in terms of healing. What better way than to show you all of my vulnerable moments. I was importing the footage earlier and I was like, can I, should I share this? Like, can I like actually share this and be this vulnerable online? It's important to share all the things that you feel, all of the like really low lows so that when people see the really high highs, they know that that's not all the time. One of my favorite TikToks that I saw recently was that you can't have a slay era without a flop era. Obviously it's not a flop era, but that was just a great way to put it. It definitely feels like this path is a bunch of loop-de-loops and scribbles versus like one straight fork, let's say. And that's totally okay. I'm like learning to embrace it. I think past me would have fallen into really, really insane spirals. So I'm so happy with how I managed through this this time around. It shows how much growth I've gone through. I'm gonna change into a different background because it feels like it's getting really gloomy in this one and this is a good way too to start showing you guys around this space. I think I'll do like an apartment tour soon. I feel like this isn't any better because it's overhead lighting but we're just gonna try to roll with it. Can't even see this beautiful art piece behind me. Basically, <laughs> Montreal ended up flopping. If you follow me on Instagram or my other socials, you have seen a little bit of that journey. It has dragged on for like two, three months. So with Montreal, holy crap. So I found this beautiful loft three or four months ago and I was waiting until it was available to move in. So I think it was supposed to be available at first on October 15th. My whole plan was that I was gonna go there for fall from mid-October until March to film, to document, to just like, you know, like live my best life. I was gonna move in on October 19th because she had to redo the floors. So I packed up all of my stuff I was back in Mississauga in Toronto for that weekend and then I was at a concert and like the next day I was going to drive up to Montreal. I'm at the concert, I get a text from her at like 6 p.m. right before the concert starts and she's like, hey, so like, I think we need to delay move-in because I actually need to redo, redo the floors. It's gonna take longer. She doesn't know how long. Thank God I had a place to come back to because I still had my loft. Otherwise I would have been homeless. Save me from this story. I 
we don't even Sick of waiting on my forward to last last friday i am getting ready for a girls night i'm like so excited we were about to re-sign a lease for new dates and then she texts me and i reread her text and i didn't agree to include parking and i'm like i could show you the text where you did and she's making all these excuses up about how she still doesn't really know when the floor is going to be ready i'm like are they going to be ready like december 15th december 31st like what are you telling me and I had waited like two, three weeks for her to confirm that already. She was giving me all this bullshit about how she thought it was a miscommunication and she was waiting for me to send like um, the new deposit. And I was like, I've been waiting for you to send a new contract so I could send a new deposit. Like, what are you saying? And I'm like, hey, what the fuck? Like, no, I've spent so much time and money on just waiting in this limbo state. Like you tell me when it's ready because I would still like to move in. And I'm pretty sure at this point it's because it's now approaching like end of December. I only want to be there to March. It's like a three month lease for her. And she probably wants to find someone that's like a longer stay. And then she has the audacity three to four days later. I see it relisted on DuProprio. I call her out for it. I'm like, hey, did you relist this? Because it's now listed for $100 more and it still includes parking. Like, oh, okay, I'm going to remove it. And then I'm like, can you please tell me like, is it going to be ready for December 15th then? Because that's what the listing said. And she just screenshots what she sent me before. And I'm just like, at this point, I cannot deal with you. And that was about a week and a half ago. And I was just so done at that point. Like, thank God I had this girl's night scheduled because I needed to be around strong female energy to inspire me to be like, everything's okay. But through all of this, through the last three months, like I was already kind of stuck in this limbo phase, feeling so stuck with my life because I've been in this like, like I've been wanting to get out of like Kitchener for over a year now, but I've been looking forward to it. Like it was so heartbreaking. That was the whole Montreal fiasco. I was like, hey, F this. <laughs> I don't really want to move to Montreal right now anyway, because it's like peak winter time. And then that's when this whole place came to be. I'm going to probably film a little like tour in the next few videos. I want to do like a whole Toronto diaries, even though I'm only here for like two and a half, three weeks. But I did film a little slow like, watering my plants yesterday i was like really just feeling the vibes and like the slow living energy so go check it out it's like on instagram it's on tiktok it's on like youtube shorts so i'm so grateful that like everything worked out and i can talk to you about it now and like smile about it and laugh about it so let me show you this beautiful art piece this is one of the favorites this is also also a favorite isn't it so pretty Maybe I should film in here. We're just gonna deal with this like lamp lighting. I think I'm in such a better place now, but I still remember all of the low moments and all the times that I really struggled when I was in that like, oh my God, am I stuck in this feeling? Don't get me wrong. I am so grateful for my loft in Kitchener, but I'm not a big fan of Kitchener. Like, it was great when I was there for like the first one, two, three years and you know, had a great community and all that stuff, but it's a really small city and there's not much to do there. As someone who thrives off of like big city energy, off of seeing diversity, off of like things being open more and like there being more things to do, I need that because I no longer am able to be my own inspiration. Like I think I was that for a little bit when I first moved to Kitchener. It's a city where like if you can inspire yourself, you feel inspired but there's nothing else really that can like randomly inspire you there versus in Toronto, I feel inspired from like anything that I see when I'm like out or when I see people. So I'm gonna share some really vulnerable clips I took. They are screen recordings from TikTok because I realized that I was using TikTok drafts to record these things so that they weren't in my camera roll. And I really think it's important to show you when I'm at my like lowest, I'm breaking down. Well, I just got a text that the apartment needs to have its floors all redone because of a water problem and it won't be ready till December. And I have been packing and everything. <laughs> I think I'm just like in shock right now. Thank God I have therapy in three hours. <sighs> I was so excited. <laughs> so the only thing that I can do is I'm going to feel my feelings and cry. 
but I'm also going to pop some champagne because this should not affect me still. So, let's do this. <laughs> this is the appropriate response. <laughs> Let today forever mark the day of my Montreal apartment falling through for the dumbest reasons and she could have given me a lot more notice so am i stuck in picture no because as a strong ass woman i will navigate this obstacle like no other but for now i will feel my feels and fix my posture at the same time because i'm on this foam roller and drink all the Prosecco that I was going to drink because I was going to celebrate finally moving back to the big city where <laughs> anything could ever happen to me. There are good things that happen to me. <laughs> I'm taking a bath because I felt like I had to burst into tears today. Everything just felt so hard today. Nothing was making sense. And... I just want to like curl in bed. It also is cool that like, you know, Wolfie doesn't really care where we live. Huh, Wolfie? You don't even know what's on my mind right now. But I know that I want to get out of Kitchener. And everything else doesn't have to feel so overwhelming. Mm. I just want to have a plan and something to look forward to. But I do have something to look forward to. I trust that the universe has a plan and that this is meant for me. It's in the stars for me. So it might feel super overwhelming right now with how little movement I'm getting day to day. And I think that's why it's also overwhelming because it's like building up every day that like I want to make this happen and it's not like I'm making progress but I am so those are my thoughts to myself from the bath <sighs> I'm recording this so that future me can look back at this and know how strong I am <laughs> know how strong you are <laughs> I used to not even let myself have breakdowns like I used to never cry I never used to feel my feels and it was really important for me this time through going through this to feel my emotions because I knew that I know all the things to combat the voices in my head to combat the negative self-talk to combat all of that but I need to allow it to appear acknowledge it and then let it go versus before I would just ignore it and then that would lead me to dissociate so I'm really proud of myself for being strong enough to go through that this time around I am a very ugly crier also <laughs> I think looking back it's also silly to think that like it felt like heartbreak almost but I had such oh you can hear sirens when you have such immense hope and excitement about something and then it just all gets taken away after you've like been romanticizing it or like thinking about it and like excited about it like all that build up is just gone so i gave myself some time to like deal with it but then it's not even about the whole montreal thing but about this feeling of feeling stuck in these phases and i say this in one of these clips i'm like there's literally nothing wrong but why do i still feel like this and i think 
sometimes when that's your baseline feeling, it is not a good feeling. There are so many things that you know that you can do for yourself to make yourself feel better, to nourish your body, to take care of your mental state. But you still feel this like emptiness or you just feel nothing at all and feel like numb, you know? And that is the shittiest feeling in the world. <laughs> and I think for me, I realized that a lot of that just came from being in that environment for a little bit. So I knew, okay, this is something that I can change for myself. It sucked that it took this long. But I do believe in the universe because the universe has provided an abundance in this way is what my therapist told me three days ago. And I do want to recognize that and I want to believe that. But when the shitty moments happen, it's like, of course this happens. Like, why does nothing good ever happen to me? But I know that there are good things that happen to me. I was just in New York, the first YouTube event of my life. Like, that's amazing, you know? Like, this whole Montreal fiasco or this whole feeling stuck and feeling in a limbo took up so much of my mental energy and my mental space where even though there were good things and exciting things happening in my life and there was movement in my life and I was excited about them and I would like gave myself you know space to feel proud of myself for them it would always be overwhelmed by this feeling of being stuck or feeling sad it's like why does my brain do that I think that's something that I'm trying to go through the motions of shedding in Toronto because it's just such an overwhelming amount of good that in my brain there's literally not an ounce of negativity not an ounce of anxious self-talk not an ounce of like that voice but it's only been three days this whole little getaway for me is really about that it's about putting myself in the best environment that I can give to myself and provide to myself to help reset all that in my brain because otherwise when I was in that environment it was always just like Ugh, you know and like I knew I didn't want that but then even like knowing it but not being able to not feel it are two different things I almost felt so powerless against myself or against my brain you know the TLDR of this glow up diaries entry is it's always gonna be a journey like this it's not even a constant wave it's like going up and down and back and forth sometimes you feel like you've taken so many strides forward and then shit happens and it feels like you're back to square one but you're never back to square one because no matter what every single experience that we have teaches us something and the way that we respond is different the way that we react is different the way that we choose to you know make decisions is always different because every single time you know something else about yourself and i think that's a i think that's a beautiful thing whether you struggle with mental health whether you struggle with you know, mental illness, whether you struggle with anxiety or depression or you are just feeling the seasonal blues or you're feeling stuck in your life or you're feeling like you know where you want to be and you know how to get there but you don't have energy to get there or anything in that flavor, just know that like I believe in you and I truly believe that it's all going to work out and it might not feel like that but you have the power to do it. You have shown and proven to yourself in the past that you can do it because you're here right now today. And I think that's such an important and powerful message to remember. And it might feel like everything is just in such a low or in such a numb, in such a I don't feel anything phase right now, but you're not gonna be there forever. And I think that is the important thing. I can't say that you'll never be back in that phase because for me, like it comes and goes. But knowing that the opposite of that, when you're not feeling that way like that, I think for me has been the most important thing and it's harder sometimes to say these things and believe them where right now I can fully strongly believe them because I'm in a good spot but I tell myself the same things when I'm struggling and it might be hard to believe it might be hard to say but I know deep down I know deep down I believe it my inner child believes that these negative voices these other versions of me that are trying to pull me down they want me to not believe it but I do and I think as we continue to grow, we get stronger against these other versions of ourselves in our head or these like, these other voices. And I think that's amazing. Hopefully this is like helpful to any of you. Hopefully you enjoyed this like change of locations. This is the little living room nook. There's a TV in here. I was watching Spirited Away last night. It was amazing. I'm gonna try to put this video together. Hope you enjoy this Glow Up Diaries entry because this is a real glow up. This is a huge part of this entire journey. It's such a vulnerable spot to be in and I'm such a perfectionist. It's really hard for me to share these sides of me. Like, I hope you guys like it, you know? So yeah, I know this is a long chatty catch up, but I really missed, I really missed just catching up with all of you. So it feels really nice too.
it's like very chill like I think after this you'll see some Toronto Diaries entries I don't know what to call it yet but Toronto Diaries or just Living Alone Diaries Toronto edition I don't know tell me what you think in the comments down below yeah I hope you guys are doing well know that you're so loved know that I love you and appreciate you so much thank you for being here and I will see you in my next video bye everyone oh and I am trying to post more on TikTok and shorts and Instagram so if you're not following on any of those yet it's at Inspiro I would really appreciate it so thank you ahead of time bye